In today's video, I just have one question for you. Would you rather live here or would you rather live here? Well, too bad. This one is for a villager. Very excited about today's episode because we're going to be building our first official house and unfortunately it's not for me it's for that guy because you know what this is not good living conditions for anybody nobody should have to live like this he's just spinning in circles he's so excited let's go before this episode I went ahead and gathered most of what I think we're gonna need for uh, this build we've got a bunch of supplies in here a bunch of wood varieties from spruce to jungle planks to dark oak varieties as well and then in this chest we have a variety of deep slate bricks and deep slate tiles and all sorts of things like that and we've got some wool we've got a little bit of red concrete powder we've got some chains we've got some lights and a few other things for minor detailing. We're not messing around today. We're getting straight into it because we have a lot of work to do. And the first thing that we need to do is assess this plot right here because this is where we're going to be building. And we'll need to figure out where the first little bit of the wireframe is going to go. If you don't know what a wireframe is, it's basically a generic outline of where the house is going to be built. And it gives you an idea of shape and size. I know that I'm going to have a staircase up to the house and I'm going to have that connect up to the path. So um, one of the pillars to the staircase, I believe, can go right about here I think that's good and then from here we can go one two and three that is going to be the actual path for the staircase and then we can go one two and three this direction and this will be the corner of the first part of our house wireframe from here we need to go 11 blocks in each direction until we have a square so we'll go one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven and place that pillar block down right there we'll do the same thing this direction one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven don't worry that this has dropped down just a bit that's totally fine and then we don't have to count out from here we can just go line up ourselves with this and line up with this and jump up place a block down double check that it is indeed a square and we are good to go then from here we're gonna go ahead and go up three more blocks on each of these pillars except for this one right here because it is a little bit lower we want it to be even with that one so we'll go up four blocks and that is the very start to our wireframe and one thing I would encourage you guys to do if you want to get better at your builds is practice them in creative mode first because that can be a huge time saver when it comes to resource gathering and figuring out block palettes and materials and all of that kind of stuff most of the time I won't do a full build I'll just do a partial one just to get a general idea of what the house is going to look like so that's what we've done and now we know exactly what we need in terms of resources not to mention if I ever do builds in survival without having done them in creative mode first for a test build sometimes I'll look at a build and I'll call it good when maybe I could have spent a little bit of extra time on it. Uh, maybe I might have just skipped over in survival because you know what? We've spent enough time on it already. Let's just call it good. We want to go all out on our build and make it look as good as possible because uh, let's be honest, for the last several years of playing Minecraft, our villager friends have been highly neglected in their living spaces. Uh, if you want to call them living spaces, we've given them a one by one hole <laughs> in, uh, in our island iron farms it's just not really it's not kind it's not fair they deserve a nice place to live too so that's what we're doing today and you know what we're, they he's even gonna have a nicer house than me all i've got is that little tent over there on the ground we're gonna be getting to our house soon enough so make sure you stick around if you're enjoying the build tutorials don't forget to hit the like button subscribe and leave a comment and let me know how you like to build your creative builds whether you do them in creative first or survival or maybe you just don't do them at all the primary block for our foundation is just regular stone but we're tossing in some andesite and as soon as we're done with the andesite we're going to throw in some cobble as well just so we have a little bit of variety and texturing in the side of the wall because if you think about a real wall it's most likely not just a flat surface without any blemishes or a variant in color or texture so that's what we're trying to replicate here now when we have a situation like this when we're on the side of a hill uh, this makes sense because it's covering up what would be behind here on the wall but this doesn't make sense because that's literally part of the wall so we need to make sure to remove those blocks and replace them with stone or andesite or cobble whatever we're going to use in that particular spot and that gives it a little bit more of a realistic look on the side of the hill when doing this kind of thing especially if you're using more than one accent block 
block, uh, less is more. If you start putting too many blocks in instead of the primary one, it's gonna start looking a little bit too busy and a little bit too planned. We want this to feel a little bit more random, so that's why we're kind of putting blocks here and there, maybe taking some out if we don't like them. I did forget to mention as well that we do need a fourth row of stone for the foundation above the three layers that we were already working on. This actually is gonna get covered up pretty much entirely from the outside, but we'll have to see if that actually gets shown on the interior. And if it doesn't, honestly, it doesn't really matter what you put there. It's gonna get covered up anyway. So uh, just go ahead and put it there. And then we're gonna take a row of logs sideways all the way around the perimeter. So that once again, we have a three tall, except for back here, foundation around the entire house. The next thing we're gonna do is take some red concrete powder directly on top of this layer of stone. And we're gonna go all the way around and we're actually going to do two layers of it. So we can go ahead and do that right here. And then we'll take our white wool directly on top of the red concrete and we'll build it up three blocks all the way around. And if we take a step back, we can see that this part down here looks okay. This not so much. That's where some of the detailing comes in. And what we're gonna do to start that process is we're gonna strip these logs. I still remember the day uh, when we played Minecraft without stripped logs. We had to use the bark on the side of the logs. And you know what? I think builds just look a lot more polished when we have this option. I'm so glad they added this block to the game. And I wish there were more blocks in the game that had some sort of a feature like this, like grass with path blocks, logs with stripped logs where you can take and alter the block to make it look slightly different. I just think that's a really interesting mechanic and a fun way to play the game. We're gonna take some more logs and we're going to strip them as we go, just so that we don't have to climb up and down every single time. And we'll do this until all four corners of our house are one block above this top layer of wool. And then we're gonna take some dark oak slabs and we're gonna place them on the top portion of this red concrete block right here. Be careful because you can place them here if you want, but that's not what we want. We want them on the red concrete. And when we take a step back to look, that already looks entirely better than it did when it started. Building in detail is all about layering. And it's not just layering in one dimension either. We layered a lot of things. We layered some stone, andesite cobblestone, put concrete powder directly on top of that, put white wool directly on top of that. There's plenty of layers, but just a flat surface like that doesn't look very good. Sometimes you can get away with the flat wall look, but for this, we needed something to divide the textures. So we've got our logs and slabs to take care of that job. Before we go up any higher or work on any more detailing, we now need to figure out where the entrance for our house is gonna be. This is going to be the face of the house that's gonna have the door. And over on this side, we're actually going to have a section that protrudes out. So it's kind of like a little bay window up at the top level. So to start, we're gonna go in between this pillar and that pillar right there. And we're gonna start right here on the corner. And we're gonna go one, two, and three, and then we can go with a full block one two and three and then we'll place another full block with a slab on top and we'll go one two and three and you can kind of see where we're going here we're going to do a staircase all the way up to where our entrance is going to be and i believe it's going to be seven blocks in that direction we want this to look like a solid stone staircase but if you look on the other side here uh, we have actually left the gap and that's fine this is another one of those time savers that's going to keep you from using all of your resources too quickly we'll just make sure that we cover this area up sufficiently so that you can't see under here. But we also wanna make sure to light this area up to prevent any mobs from spawning. Yeah, I'm still not used to the uh, the zero light mob spawn mechanics yet, so I, I still throw down torch spam. It's not necessary. You might just need one torch in there, but we're gonna go ahead and make double sure because we're gonna have villagers living here. We don't want anything to happen. Now that we've got our staircase going up seven blocks in this direction, we're actually going to extend this seventh block out two more so that we've got a three by three platform. We can go ahead and take these couple of blocks out and we might remove a few more as we get into the detailing, but that will at least establish this is going to be our doorway. Now that we've got our deep slate bricks in place, we're gonna go through and we're going to detail the staircase in a similar manner that we did to the side of the wall. I've got everything from cobbled deep slate to cracked deep slate bricks and slabs. That'll allow us to put a variety all the way up and down this staircase. So same thing here, less is more. Make sure not to go too overboard with it. Otherwise, it'll just look messy. I'm pretty happy with how our stairs have turned out so far. We've got a little bit more detailing to do before we call it good. 
We've actually added a couple of slabs up on this top landing area that are too wide because we are gonna have a double door right here. So what we can do is go ahead and put in some more pillars. And these are gonna go all the way to the top as well, where these other ones end up. Then we're gonna go around this frame and we're gonna add in some more support pillars because we do wanna divide this wall up a little bit more. So it's just not one flat surface all the way around. So we'll go ahead and toss in a pillar right here. And I know we have another one right there, but we'll go ahead and put one right there just for symmetry purposes. That way we've got an evenly divided wall. Then off to the side over here where our bay window is gonna go, we're gonna go and skip one block and then we'll do a pillar right here. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. Some other things that we can do is go over here where these pillars intersect. We're actually just gonna break this out and we're gonna reverse the orientation of it so that it's facing sideways right here as if this pillar is going all the way out and we will punch it out the side just like that. And then to mask this transition a little bit as well, we'll do the same thing here and the same thing here. And you guessed it, the same thing right here. You might remember that we put this pillar right here at the very beginning of the build. We're gonna go ahead and fill this out a little bit. We'll bring it up to about one over the top of this one for now. Then we're gonna skip two blocks here and we'll bring this one up just to about one over the top of this one. And then we'll skip two more blocks and go on the corner here and we'll go up, 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 up. And I think we'll actually bring them up one higher because we're gonna have our villager roaming around here. We don't want him to accidentally escape and put himself in danger. So I think that's the correct height and we'll go ahead and strip all these logs to match. And so now rather than just having a deep slate brick staircase sticking out of nowhere, uh, it actually looks framed in and part of the rest of the build. This is one of the most difficult parts about building is finding the ways that you can cross section things and put pillars in, subdivide your walls, subdivide your staircases, things like that to make things look separate but all part of the same build at the same time. Yeah, that makes absolutely no sense at all, but you just go with it, it's fine. I think the next natural step at this point is to work on this bay window because it's gonna have a roof line separate from the rest of the house. And so we can't really start working on the roof or any of the final detailing until we get that in place. So what we need to do is come to these pillars that we placed on the inside of this wall right here. And we're gonna go down to this block and we're gonna place an upside down stair right there. And then we'll go over here and jump and and trap ourselves in. Nope, that's not what we wanna do. We'll go over here and we'll place a stair right there, very good. And then one more upside down stair just like that. And the same thing here, we'll take our logs and we'll make sure that they stick out one past the edge of that stair and then strip the log, strip the log and repeat the same process over here. From here, it's gonna be very similar to the start of the build where we did a little bit of a wireframe and we're gonna build that on top of these support beams. We're gonna make sure to leave one block at the end and we're just gonna go all the way to the top of the build like we've done with these pillars. And then basically anything that's on the inside of these two pillars right here, we're just gonna go ahead and rip it out because it's gonna get pushed forward to the edge of this wall. I run a couple of rows of top slabs here and one slab here and one slab there. Corners are a bit weird in this kind of scenario. So what we're gonna do, we're actually just gonna go ahead and break that back out for the moment. And we're gonna break our rule with the flat wall and we're gonna put our concrete right there. And then we'll put our wool right there. But then we're gonna go a sharp corner right here at a diagonal and put one here and then the three wool there. And now we can can run the red concrete powder all the way across because the window is actually gonna go in this top section up here and we can run wool on this side and then wool right there and we should have room for a three wide window. And then to divide this up, just like we've done around the rest of the house, we can do something pretty similar. We're gonna go right there on that pillar and then we'll go right there on that pillar and then we'll put one right here and we've got a nice little corner piece to divide up the concrete concrete from the wool. It looks a little bit out of place until we run the slabs across the middle like that and then it just looks like a continuation of a trim piece. I think that looks really nice. We're just about ready to start working on the roof and now we need to finish off the frame. I'm gonna bust out these two middle ones above the front door to where they are flush with the top of the wool part of this wall. Then what we're gonna do is run a support beam all the way across here, all the way across here, and then all the way across the back. Because we have this bay window here, we're not gonna add a support beam between these two 
and you'll see why with the roof line here in just a moment. And then out of the side of the wool block, we'll place one deep slate tile. Absolutely love these blocks for outlines or even full roofs. They make perfect shingles. Then we're gonna go over one and we'll place another temporary block and we'll go up one with our next deep slate tile. A lot of concept art for fantasy or magical style houses showed very high pitched roofs. So that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna start it out shallow and then we're gonna rapidly increase the vertical height of the roof. And we're gonna do that by going up to here and then another temporary block. We'll go up three here, another temporary block, and then we're gonna go up one. That should be the center of the bay window and we should be able to do the exact same thing over on this side and meet up right in the middle where that roof line leaves off. I like the general shape of this so far, but we're gonna put some slabs and stairs in here to kind of fill in some of the gaps, especially where there's blocks that don't actually touch. They're just kind of catty cornered to each other. That'll help to make a smoother transition. A lot of times what I like to do on roofs when you have a singular block in the middle is place a stair facing forward in between the two blocks to the sides. And that kind of helps smooth out the transition up as well. So if we take a step back here and take another look, that's a lot less jagged than it was before. And it's gonna get even better once we fill in the roof line. The bay window is actually the only roof line that's going to be facing this direction. We're actually gonna go ahead and take the other the roof line and go up this way so that they're facing opposite directions. And this roof line over here is gonna go a little bit higher than the bay window one, just to give some added dimension and depth. And now we have two very nice high-pitched roof outlines and we need to start filling these in. In order to do that, we've got our deep slate. We're just gonna continue the outline. So we're gonna start with this one right here and we're gonna bring it back two blocks to where it fits nicely in this corner. And then we're gonna bring this one back one block for now. Actually, we're gonna go ahead and bring it back two. That way it's in line with that pillar. On the opposite side over here, we can go ahead and bring this all the way down the line. Nice little quick tip about Bedrock Edition, you can pillar out forward just by kind of aiming over the edge of the block and placing the block down. Java Edition, you actually have to turn around and place it physically on the face of the block like that. That's one nice thing that Bedrock has that makes building a lot quicker. Now we need to repeat this same pattern over on the back side of the house, and then we can keep filling in from there. Next, we're gonna take some jungle planks and we're just going to outline. So right here, we'll bend it around to match this roof line, and we're actually gonna bring it down right here. And then we'll go up here and do the same thing, making sure not to pass this roof line because we want this to be the primary and this to be the inter sect so we'll go ahead and place a couple of blocks right here and then a couple of blocks right here and we'll just continue this shape all the way up probably the easiest way to tackle this is to actually just run this roof line straight across so we'll just go all the way across until this meets up with the other side of the roof and we'll fill in this main roof first and then i'll come back and we'll kind of polish up the intersection right here to polish up this bay window roof line what we're going to do is the same thing we did down here and we're just going to outline this and then break out anything that's within in the bounds of this roof line. So we'll go ahead and go right here and then we can break this out and then we'll build it up and then we can break the middle out again and we'll keep going up and break out the middle again until we get to this point right here and it should meet up nice and smooth with the rest of the roof. Now we can go down to the bottom and take a quick look at our finished product and it's not actually finished yet. We're gonna do a little bit more detailing to it, but Hey, that's not bad. Looks pretty good from this angle, minus the scaffolding. Ah, oh, looks even better from this angle. Absolutely love it. Honestly, we could probably keep this roof line the way that it is, and it would be just fine, but we don't want just fine. We want insanely awesome. So we're gonna keep going. In order to take this house from eh, pretty good to insanely awesome with the roof, uh, we need to keep working on it. But before we can work on the roof, we need to fill in this area that I'm standing in right now. We're gonna match it with the wall below and we're just gonna fill in our white wool and we'll follow this roof line all the way up. So it should kind of staircase itself inward as we go. From here, the way that we're gonna make this roof look even better is we're gonna start making it a bit more jagged. We don't want flat straight lines like this across the roof line. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna place a block here, block there, maybe a block there. Maybe we'll go up to here. Then we can go as far as to do something like break a block out. Now, we have that wool sitting there, so we need to be careful. We probably shouldn't do that in that spot. So we'll move back one, break that one out, and that's fine, because that's covered up by the face of the house. And we can place another roof block right there. 
Maybe we'll pop that one up. Maybe we'll pop one here. We're just gonna be a little bit random with this. And then we'll take a step back and look at it and see what we've got. And there we go. We've taken our roof line from eh, just okay to super awesome. And if we take a look around the other sides of the house, you can see that we've done the exact same thing. If we go up here, got a very cool jagged looking roof line. And over here, we've done the same thing. This is a little bit flat because we're gonna put a chimney up here in just a little bit. But all in all, this place is looking pretty good. We are basically done with the entire structure of the house and everything from here on out is detailing. We need to go around and do some of these support beams on some of the other sides of the house. We've got some fences we need to add in, some windows and trap doors. There's a lot to do. So uh, we've taken a lot of time so far on this. I'm gonna try to do a little bit of a speed run for the remainder of the build and we'll show you the most important things. I've never really used jungle wood in any builds before this, but I really like how the warm tones of the roof kind of match the warm tones of the rest of the house as well. The only cool tones we have are like this part right here and that part right there, which very nicely contrasts from the rest. But I want to tie that jungle wood in in the rest of the house as well. So what we're going to do to help tie that in is anywhere we have an open ended log, we're going to just place a trap door just like that and not just any trap door a jungle trap door. Same thing goes for the sides. We're gonna go ahead and place the trap door there and shut it so that the little metal bracket is down at the bottom. I just kind of like the way that that looks. You can do it the opposite way if you aim your cursor right at the bottom of the log and kind of flip the trap door up, but we want them all to be facing the same direction for a little bit more uniformity. Another nice little detail we can add to the house is a combination of fences and fence gates. Anywhere that we're going to be detailing on the bottom side of a block, we're going to place our fence gates and then we're gonna open them and we're just gonna run them all the way across. We'll do this basically around the entirety of the house on the foundational level. And then the opposite side of this, when we place things on top of a top slab or top of a block, like we're about to do here, we're gonna use fences. If you try to use the fence gate trick, it doesn't really look good because it doesn't connect to anything. Fences on the other hand will look really nice. And I just realized we're actually not gonna put anything here just yet because that is the window, but we can come around to the other side and place fences right here, here, and here. And anywhere there is a dark oak slab, we can just continue this pattern of dark oak fences. In our bay window, we're gonna stand inside of these pillars and we're gonna jump and place a trap door, and then we're gonna open it up. Then we're gonna go ahead and break the log here temporarily. And then we will probably have to break that one too, to be honest. And then while we're crouching, we'll go ahead and jump and place another trap door right there. And then we can open it up just like so. We'll do the same thing over here. Jump, flip the trap door open, and then jump, trap door open. And that makes it look like it's got shutters that are open. And no, I know, it's not quite long enough to close fully if we were to really close those uh, because it's three blocks wide versus having two shutters. I know, I know, I know, math. But it's just selling the illusion that that window is open. And I love that idea that this window overlooks the pathway and kind of that valley over there towards Prowl's area. I know it might seem like some of this is a little bit jumbled. We're jumping back and forth from thing to thing, and it kind of is, but there is a method to the madness. You build the frame, then you build the walls, then you build the roof, then you do the details, and you add little things as you go, and that's honestly just the process of building. Once you think you're done, you step back and say, what else could I do to this to make it look even better? Just when you thought we were done with the roof, we're actually gonna go ahead and pull this out and replace it with some more deep slate tile just to further drive home that border. We want a little bit of a degree of separation between this and what we're going to do next, so it makes a lot of sense to go ahead and put deep slate here. Same goes for the roof over our bay window. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take some more of these spruce logs. We like tying things in from other parts of the build, and there's no spruce up here. So we're going to take some spruce logs, and we're just going to run them across the top of this. Just be careful not to fall off. And we'll make sure that it runs a couple past the edge of the roof line. And the reason for that is because we're going to put a stair directly underneath this log right here so that it's got the illusion of support. Then we'll go ahead and strip all of these logs like usual, and we'll toss a jungle trap door right on the edge. We're gonna do the same thing up here, except for this one runs into the side of the roof. We're just gonna run these off the edges of both sides. I want to tie in the deep slate tiles from the roof into part of this build as well. So we're gonna place some tiles right here, some tiles right there, and then a row of deep slate tile slabs across the top here to frame out our shutters. There's a lot of open space right here, so I think I wanna fill that in, especially if we're gonna leave that red concrete powder open. 
And so we can pillar up and we're going to use a combination of dark oak fences and dark oak fence gates to make a little cool pattern. So from the top, we'll run a row of fences down the middle. And then on either side of that, we'll do fence gates, fence gates, and then fences just like that. Then we're going to pop open all of these fence gates and it just makes a really cool design. From here, if we want, we can randomize it a little bit so we can pop that fence gate out and put a regular fence there. Then maybe up here, we can pop that fence out and put a fence gate instead. And similarly to our roof, how we kind of made it look a little bit more jagged, this kind of breaks up the monotony a little bit as well. Then we can find a couple of spots around the building to put a couple windows. I like to use panes because they offer a little bit more depth than full glass blocks. Honestly, I don't think it takes much because we've got that big bay window right there. We've got a small window on the front of the house, and then we have a basement window off to the side. I think that's plenty for this particular build. And now we need to take a look at lighting. Because a villager lives here, we want to make sure that this is sufficiently lit on the outside so that no mobs can spawn around this area. We don't want anything happening to our villager, so lighting there, lighting there. Then maybe on this side of the house, we'll put them on the outer edge. And we can do the same thing here and there. We're definitely gonna get a porch light, but I wanna wait on that for just a minute. We'll go up to the roof line where we got these little overhangs here, and maybe we'll drop this one down by a couple of chains and we'll attach a lantern there. And I wanna make sure these are all at different heights. So I'm gonna be careful with how many chains I put on this one. I think we'll do two as well so that it does drop a little bit lower than that one over there. Yep, I think that looks good. And then on the backside here, maybe we'll drop that one down by one chain. Yep, I really like that. I like the contrast of different heights on those chains and lighting. And honestly, I think we are about done. The last thing we need to do is work a little bit more on this entrance and we can call the exterior of this house complete. So that this staircase isn't quite so exposed, we're gonna go ahead and put some fences and we're gonna gradually increase the height of them because we do wanna keep our villager inside here if he chooses to come outdoors. So we're gonna make sure that he can't climb over this fence just by building it up a little bit higher than the stairway. And I don't really like that. I don't want it to be a full solid wall of dark oak in front of that staircase. It kind of takes away from it a little bit. So I think I'm gonna break these out a little bit so that it's a little bit more like a handrail and less like a fence going around it. Yeah, I think that could be good. We need a little entryway over our doors. So we're gonna go ahead and put a fence here and a fence there. And we're gonna keep this very simple. We're just gonna go like this with some deep slate tiles. We'll go back one and up one and we'll go forward one just like that. So it's a little bit of an arch over the entryway. I think that's pretty good. And then we can take our doors. We've got two jungle doors and place them here and here. Now what it does need is a little bit of light. So we could potentially take a log out like this and then a couple of fences, and then just hanging straight from the fence, we got a little lantern, and that makes a nice little porch light. I've been building this whole time and talked several times about the chimney, and we've still forgotten to put it on, so I thought that was the last thing we needed to do, but we still need to put the chimney on. We're building a one by one hole here on the top of our roof for our chimney, and we need to make sure to light it up because we are gonna cover this up and I don't want anything to spawn in here. But once we have the height to where I think we're happy with it, we can place a block a couple below the top layer here and we'll place it right there. I've got a campfire that we don't want anybody to see. All we wanna see is the smoke effect coming out of the chimney. I also remember a day when uh, we didn't have stripped logs and we didn't have smoke. We had to make smoke out of spider webs, but we're so spoiled these days. We've got amazing effects in Minecraft just like that. There's a couple places we need to cover up, like we need to bring this all the way down to that roof line and that all the way down to that roof line and then maybe flesh it out a little bit and bring it down all the way to the bottom. Uh, I'm gonna do that off camera and we'll tinker with it. I'll show you what we got, but it's not a whole lot different than what we've been doing so far. Building the basics and then doing the details. And there you have it. We're standing across the river with our RTX pack on just so we can check out the lighting at night. And oh my goodness, this looks so cool. I'm incredibly thrilled with how this turned out and it looks even better during the day. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you. I spent a couple hours this afternoon on a live stream. It's a Saturday. We're releasing this video on a Sunday. We spent some time working out the details of the inside of this house. Are you ready to see it? Let's break down this fence. We have our mending villager inside working away, uh, but we don't want him to escape because danger, 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 danger. It's, it's a very scary place out there. Hello, Mr. Villager. His name is Mendo, the, the Mandalorian. <laughs> 
Uh, so we have our RTX pack on right now, and unfortunately, the current release of this RTX pack, there's a little bit of weirdness with villagers. If we turn RTX off, oh, hey, there he is. He's a librarian. We can tell he's a librarian by his hat and all that good stuff. So he's working away at his workbench. We got a nice fireplace over here to keep him warm at night. We got plenty of bookshelves for him to read and learn how to make mending even better, especially I think this bookshelf right here is the one that tells you to keep it off your bow uh, because infinity is better. But when it gets to be nighttime and he gets really sleepy, we got this nice little loft form. We got a creeper picture frame. We got a nice potted plant. We got a nice sand with a, with a lamp. And most importantly, we got a red bed for our villager friend. Now this place down here is off limits to him. Uh, it's the basement. He's not allowed down here. This is where we store all of the mending books that we're going to trade with him. We got some extra bookshelves. We got a nice view of the campsite, at least for now, until some things start filling this place out. But that's it. We're done. Maybe you're thinking this is a bit overkill for a villager house, but you know what? Who cares? It's amazing. And so are you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.